Welcome back, Warriors of the Wasteland, to Flights of Fandom. I am, as always, your GM, your Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla this evening, Great Zamino, otherwise known as Zach. I use he, him pronouns, and I am once again joined by a fantastic crew of mad men and women and people. If you wouldn't mind each of you introducing your warrior persona and yourselves to the fine people out there in the wastelands, I'd be much obliged, much appreciated. Starting with David. Hey folks, David here, he, him. I'm a graphic designer, an illustrator, and a game designer. Check out my tabletop RPGs over at dbb-8.itch.io. I'm also on Instagram and Twitter at dbrunel Brutman. And this evening, I am once again picking up the role of Maguire, the Maestro D. Excellent. Moving once again down the overlay, Hopper, if you'd like to introduce yourself. No. No, I can't. I can't. I can. What's up, everybody? I'm Hopper. Um, I'm a pro GM and arborist based out of Brooklyn, New York. I use they them pronouns. Um, and if you want to find more of my bullshit, um, I don't know. I'm all up in the server, like rats in the wall. Um, and uh, and also you could follow me at Failed Deadly. That is with a three instead of an e because I'm a bad person. Or for more, I don't know, good quality shit. If you don't like bad hot takes, um, then you can follow me at the Legend Tree. And tonight I will be returning um, to uh, a more, yeah, completely normal and completely un unsuspicious, uh, you know, teenage boy by the name of Daxo of the Kalbari faithful. And he's just here to have a good time. He wants everybody to have a good time, and it is no way suspicious. Mm -mm. Not at all. Uh, Daxo uses he, they pronouns, so. Awesome. Uh. And Marcy, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hey, y'all. Uh, I'm Marcy, a.k.a. Experimental Madness, which is the username you can find me most places around the internet. Uh, I am very excited to be back uh, playing Kerosene who's totally normal <laughs> and not in any way unhinged. Uh, she's our resident faceless. Excellent. And finally, rounding out this merry band of marauders, Fox. Yes, hello everyone. I am Rocket Fox. You can find me where all Rocket Foxes, as always, can be found, but most often on Instagram and soon to be coming back on um, my Twitch channel. But in the meantime, on Thursday nights, I'm over on Sirenscape where we are playing a weekly cyberpunk raid game. And we just rounded out our fourth season. So uh, a lot of adventure to go. <laughs> um, and as far as tonight goes, I'm uh, I'm playing Sin, who uh, is, is you know your battle babe. I'm just I'm just here to currently ride my my muscle cycle. Excellent. Uh, so, guys, I believe a little bit of uh, history from the word burgers of the history men is in order. So, allow me to put on a little bit of music as we recap the uh, events that have led our fine group of marauders and road warriors to the northern badlands. So, one too long ago, things in Black Rock were simple. McGuire ran the dust bucket, finest uh, watering hole in that place. Only watering hole, but by technicality, yeah. And not only that, on top of everything, you had uh, yourselves, between you and Sin, a couple of fine charges in the form of uh, Daxo and Kerosene. But at the same time, the boat got rocked with little to no water to have underneath it so you could understand everything going extra pear-shaped when a stranger brought trouble into your town in the form of a trio of three toughs, what you took out nice and quick-like. However, one of them 
is the son of somebody you remember, McGuire in particular, and that somebody was one nasty character by the name of what you once knew was Omega, but is now known to the rest of the wasteland proper as Alpha Dag. Now, Alpha Dag, Omega, whatever he's calling himself, just far enough north to be out on the horizon, you realize that he's running a pack of raiders called the Dog Pack. So, rather than wait after uh, Sprog, his son, breathed his last, you decided it was time to take the fight to him. And you were going to press gang this stranger to come along with you, this Mad Max, as it were. So you did all the best preparations that all you guys could. You suited up. You grabbed uh, what weapons and uh, what interesting implements you could find. Where possible, you uh, made additional uh, upgrades, as it were, and picked up a few uh, interesting little bits of party favors in the form of a pair of sticks of dynamite. But at the end, it all comes down to blood, bullets, and gasoline. And riding atop the muscle cycle, Sin leads all of you, the rest of you, in this Lancer tank that you've made out of some old history chassis, done it up nice and proper, nice and bladed. And you find yourselves in the midst of a horrible wasteland that is the Northern Badlands. So, what do you think, looking out onto the ruined soil, the long stretches of cliffs, and the uh, vast stretches of plains uh, cracked and dried from the lack of water from so much time, of those three, which of these things has given you guys the most trouble? What's vexing you? Don't be shy. Speak up. I mean, I think it's got to be like the probably the most immediately the most immediate thing that we're having trouble with is the heat. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, absolutely. Like we we've been in uh, this nice, uh, you know, naturally climate controlled uh, underground uh, cave system for some time, specifically to stay out of the brutal weather in these badlands, and uh, now we don't have that protection anymore. That is right. The sun beats down on all of you. Sin, especially on you, I believe. You'd have to be covered head to toe not to feel it. And uh, as you uh, uh, kind of expose the whole of your body on the muscle cycle to the uh, caustic uh, and drying air around you. How's that going? You know, it's going all right. It's going all right. Uh, It's very dusty, though. Uh, Very hot and very dusty. A lot of dust flying around. Um, But... As Sin has been a traveler before, I think she would know a little bit what to expect. So I imagine she kind of wrapped up the face, wrapped up everything to keep out of the sun a little bit, got some got some of the Googles on, <laughs> uh, and trying to keep the dust out of the lung, the eyes, the ears, um, and all other places dust can go. Excellent. So that leaves... Not but our two kiddos, as it were. Let's start with Kerosene. What are you up to? What are you taking in as you make this journey? I I think it's nice outside. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care that it's hot. I like I like that. Um, I think she's uh standing on the little platform behind uh the Lancer truck. Um, she's got her little perch. Uh, and, uh, she, she's got her bungee cord leash (laughs) wrapped around her waist. Uh, but I think it's a very eerie sight. If you were to see it from the outside, there's this weird scraggly looking child figure, but she's mildly hunched over wearing a very intimidating looking 
gas mask with some sort of metal proboscis sticking out the end of it. Um, and uh, her her prosthetic hands are reticulated to be holding on to a little bit of a, a slight pole that I think is jutting out just so she can ground herself. Uh, but strapped to her back are very clear uh, tanks uh, that mm, are going to help her power some flamethrower devices that she's got somewhere on her person. They don't seem, they seem, the tubes seem to go up to her wrists and then stop. Excellent. What about you, Dak? So what do you make of this uh, mess? So I think Dak, so um, who's, you know, just kind of pretty runty and skinny for, you know, uh, late teens um, and just uh, extremely pale um, is fully wrapped up um, at this point uh, with this kind of cloak and like this really tattered, heavily patched scouts uniform. Um, I think it's the kind, I think it's like the kind with uh, the like, zip off pants. Um, so like there with, so there's no, there's it's shorts. There's no, there's no pant legs. Um, and uh, like this, like this little dust mask. So it's just the eyes and just see the eyes um, and is wedged between Maguire and this stranger, Max. And um, it's just kind of going. As for the stranger. At, at Max, just to be very clear, like just kind of like a hi. <laughs> <laughs> I I have a question for Dak, so I'm curious. When was the last time you traveled anywhere? That uh, is this a question that McGuire asks, or is this more of a general question? No, I uh, I David, I'm curious. Um, the uh, I guess I guess uh, McGuire would know that, especially uh, you would have been around when the uh, all these kids, a whole shitload of kids, showed up out of the desert. Um, and they were all pretty fucking intense, but most of them kind of got adopted out, fostered out, like kind of the, the town figured it out. Um, some of them moved on like with people and whatnot, but, um, a few Daxo included, uh, just went down to the caves, but all anybody knows is that they traveled for a very long time through the desert with no apparent water except for one single barrel that they brought that they apparently refused to drink. Um, so the Daxo has been out and about and kind of gets fully kitted up in this whole scout. It's a very ceremonial scout get up anytime um, he's, he's gone out into the world. It seems like the, the, the Kalbari have like a very specific needs that, um, uh, are not necessarily found in Black Rock. But like the last time that you under probably a couple any months ago lengthy journey. Probably a couple months ago. You probably didn't see Daxo for a few weeks. Oh, okay. So you you have gone out in the world since mm -hmm. uh since arriving at Black Rock. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 traditional for them to maintain like kids disappear for a little while and show back up. Um, creepily all the time. It's always creepy when they show back up, but yeah, of course. That's that goes without saying. That's mandatory. Yeah. All right. Close the medicine cabinet, and then just all the children right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> just like <laughs> like the little pop 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 sound. So <laughs> picturing diglets, <laughs> like little creepy diglets. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> So, uh, as you guys come to this crossroads, um, Ma uh, this stranger is going to look at your options. He's going to look at the uh, terrain out in front of you, uh, the cliffs, and then he's going to look over uh, in the direction of like the wide open plains. Uh, and he says to all of you, which way? That way. Which way is he pointing? He's pointing towards the wide plains, um, the kind of like the open, cracked, but solid ground. He says, that way. That's where the men, the pack is. This way. And he's pointing to the other two areas, kind of like this 
uh, what looks to be this wide kind of expanse of uh, what looks to be kind of like sour earth that kind of transforms further down the road into this kind of clouded marshland. Um, and then kind of like then points to the kind of cliffs that seem to surround it. Uh, and he kind of points at these. He says, more dangerous, less known, but direct bad way. Hold on, hold on. And I imagine there's either no windows or the windows are open. <laughs> um, listen, are you mad? We're just going to go straight up to them? Without any plan, just 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 gonna go straight up, just straight up, outnumbered, outguns. Not my plan. And he's again points to the other uh, ways around you, to the uh, the badlands, the marshlands, and these cliffs. Better, but probably dangerous. <laughs> Mag, come on, you know, going straight into you've dealt with these people before. Going straight into them is gonna be a death sentence. Yeah, I agree with you, Sin. So, uh, we gotta come at him sideways, like. Uh, and McGuire is kind of, like, leaning on the, you know, uh, on the window, uh, whether it had glass. I, I think it never had glass in it at, at any point, like. Uh, <laughs> or if it did, it was so long ago that it's irrelevant. <laughs> you know, leaning on the window, one hand on the on the wheel, um, has probably put on some, uh, some, like, beat-to-shit leather driving gloves. Um, yeah, way I figure it, we gotta scout out first, find where they're located, and, uh, get in and out without attracting too much attention, at least initially. So, oh, I uh, think that stranger, makes a lot more sense. Yeah. You came from that direction, and I point over at the Badlands. And that's where they intercepted you. Yeah. All right. So, uh, this other way, you ain't been down there? And which way are you pointing to? Towards the, um, the, the sort of, uh... Is it is it a marsh or is it canyons? Uh, it's not... on on one side is like just not like I think probably uh, it seems like there's just like a, a canyon kind of like network of caves. Okay. Um, yeah, kind of like these kind of like sheer cliff faces that are really kind of actually fairly uh, low to the earth. Um, they're not like mountainous or anything like that. It's they're, like ravines. Yeah, it's like ravines and winding networking uh, kind of canyon uh, areas. Uh, okay, so, so it, it like goes down below the sort of level of the Badlands and then there's this kind of network of ravines. Yeah, exactly. You get the sense that uh, maybe this marshland at one point may have been like an oasis or like a wide kind of like uh, uh, body of water of some sort. Uh, that has just gone sour and the earth has gone sour with it. Um, so it seems like uh, you can't really kind of get a read out on it too much, like the terrain from where you are. You'd have to kind of get closer to get a vibe, but you know that probably that soil is a lot more treacherous. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, M McGuire is going to say, uh, you ain't been through this, stranger. Uh, and he looks at the um, networked tunnels and the, the kind of like the canyons and just says, No, nah, not there. Slow. So, Slow through the so marshlands. Yeah. How you, uh, how you figure you know where that comes out? It's a long way around, but it comes to the same place. Both of them. You end up just past them. Just past. Do I feel like his information is good here? <laughs> like, what's my vibe? Um, I get a vibe check. You can yeah. absolutely read me a situation. I, uh, I'm. I, I'd like to either. I, I'm kind of. Uh, I'm kind of leaning. Well, no, I guess read a situation is is a little more. 
is a little more useful here. I forgot dice. I didn't get dice. Yeah, get dice. <laughs> dice are helpful for games like this. I'll, the, I'll meet you during the break. I'm just going to roll. While McGuire is figuring that out, do you have anything plastic on you? What? On on me? On McGuire. Uh, not really, no. small. Anything like uh, small little tidbits? Does question for the GM does max um you may go ahead if you'd like to read a person you can do uh I will say that you can roll plus sharp to see uh if he Oof. has something oh, wait on I only rolled one dice and it was a six um mm -hmm. so I get to roll another dice that's very exciting that's a 10 okay uh yeah I would say uh max has probably got some little uh kind of like plastic uh doohickeys or tchotchkes on him uh, they seem to be like little tiny tchotchkes. like funnels. Uh, I say tchotchkes, but they're just like <laughs> little funnels and like little kind of um, like probably you can tell like one is like probably a tool that he has sharpened into a shiv and another one uh, that seems to be uh, for the purpose of like opening kind of canisters. Uh, they seem to be just like improvised uh, bits and bobs. I'd like to steal one after David tells us what happens all right david tell us what happens what happens is i rolled a four <laughs> all right so okay. so have fun with your hard move <laughs> a ask ask one of these questions anyway where's my best escape route way in way past which enemy is most vulnerable to me which enemy is the biggest threat what should i be on the lookout for what's my enemy's true position or who's in control here what do you want to ask? Ripes. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it's what's my best way past. All right. So. Or way through. Best way through. So. The thing that you gather is that, you know, Max, the stranger, ha is a few uh, uh, cards shy of a full deck. Um, and so in a panic, may have made his way somehow preternaturally through this bad land. Um, the thing that you gather is the bad land is the safer route, relatively speaking, in that you stand to lose your vehicles if you are not careful. Um, if uh, basically you try to ride through this, uh, uh, this obstacle, the cliff face is probably the easier drive, but there is no telling what or who dwells in the cliff face. You know for a fact that Max mentioned having a car at some point, which means as you kind of like, I think the worst realization is that he's probably not telling you everything about where he may have stowed that pursuit special. Oh yeah, McGuire is very interested in that, and he has noted this mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, all right, so you know, McGuire kind of grips the wheel, kind of growls a little bit, uh, tap, sort of leans out the the window, taps the roof. Boy, kerosene. Yeah. What do you think? Can, Funny, uh... you should ask that. Because I think, I think while you're while, when you once you tapped onto the roof, you could hear her muttering to herself. She does that a lot. It's very clear she's talking to Guzzle, which is her mask, um, and uh, she sort of asked, she she sensed that everyone feels like they don't know where they're going. She's seen Max gesture into the different options that we have, and she'd like to ask Guzzle, what's the best way to go with my very fun. Move, oh uh, where I seek the advice of my mask. All right, that's wild. Because McGuire very specifically wants to ask you, like, what do you think, girl? Can uh, the tiles on the grumble handle this? I would like you to read the text of that move for me, if you would. You seek the advice of your mask. Roll plus weird to see what it directs you to do. On a ten plus, mark experience and take plus one forward. If you do, as your mask wishes. On a seven to nine, take plus one if you do what it wants and act under fire if you don't. 
On a miss, it has its own agenda. Act under fire if you don't follow it. Okay. So, in this case, I would like you to roll plus weird. All right. Oh, that's nice. Okay, that's actually going to be a 10. All right. So with my, with my plus. So I leveled up right there. <laughs> awesome. So make sure to take uh, another move or an advancement. Uh, we'll, we'll do that uh, in, in uh, a moment anyway, as we can kind of like almost see it's like this insight that the max uh, mask gives you, uh, which is this. Oh, actually, what's the voice of the mask sound like? Oh, well, funny. Uh, it has many voices, depending on what her mind state is. <laughs> uh, the voices are, are voices out of her past. So any advice the mask is offering her is trying to break through her veneer of insanity to have her remember things. So whatever advice she's receiving, these are memories. And there is this kind of almost very reassuring kind of male voice, uh, this very kind of almost parental uh, tone to it. It says, now remember, if you were to go through a quagmire and that any of those uh, wheels sink and they can't get out, there's no way of you recovering that entire vehicle. Whole thing's lost. It's going to be a real hard time. So let me just tell you right now, whatever threats are in those cliffs, let me just say, if you go fast enough, you may not have to worry about them. But at the same time, if you go careful, you might be able to see them coming ahead of time. Girl, this is very important. Take care of yourself out there. All right? Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, take care. Mm, mm, mm. Can't go through the marsh. Wheels will get stuck. We'll lose the car. We can go up the cliff, but we gotta be fast. We gotta be careful. We might be able to see any enemies that come our way. Yeah, yeah, I told him. I told him. That was allowed. <laughs> Sorry? I, that I'm confirming that, that that was out loud. Oh, yeah, that was... Oh, I thought you said that was loud, and I was like, oh, was my mic level weird? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, she was responding to you. All right. Black Thumb says wheels won't handle that marsh. No. So, we want to stay out of sight. We got to take the cliffside. Yeah, yeah, fast and careful. I heard it. And uh, Sin's just going <laughs> to rev it up and just start going. Okay. So uh, as you guys begin making your way uh, cliffside, now the cliffs are fairly sheer. If you were to, uh, you know, spend a bit of time to try to maneuver them, maybe you could ride atop uh, and with a sheer enough uh, kind of force from the vehicles, or you could try to ride along the bottom uh, slow and easy. What do you guys want to do? I don't know what the car is going to do, but <laughs> uh, Sin's going to go up top. Okay. Yeah, I feel like the car should stick low. All right. Yeah, we, we kind of split it a little bit and move in parallel, but Sin probably gets some speed on us. All right. So, Sin, you are going to have to deal with bad terrain. Roll plus cool plus your vehicle's handling on a 10 plus. I yeah. I'm so ready for this. All right. <laughs> I've never been more ready for anything in my life. Excellent. All right. Um, you said plus handling? Yeah, plus handling. Uh, I believe that with a bike, uh, I think you just take plus uh, handling equals zero. Um let me see. Battle options. Are I you... do see that uh, the the muscle cycle strengths are that it is fast and aggressive. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I think you are just rolling straight. You are. Uh, okay. yeah. yeah. I hadn't seen uh, handling on it, but I um, didn't know if maybe I missed it. All right. Here we go. It's going to be awesome. So awesome. 11. Okay. All right. <laughs> awesome. All right. So. On a 10 plus, you fly through untouched. Uh, okay. So, yeah. 
describe for me what the process of going over top of this like ravine looks like and the canyon kind of like walls and the like kind of like the top of them uh they're fairly narrow but this is not the first very kind of like narrow ride you've ever had uh like you're used to riding into danger describe what this looks like i think when sin just kind of took off <laughs> uh kind of goes over to the cliffs and then just kind of pops the bike up uh and just like immediately goes up top of this thing and is is real close to the edge is looking around once the and she can she can kind of peripheries once the car is within sight a little bit more close uh, she does in fact pop a wheelie <laughs> excellent oh, yeah and as you do the like the wheelie as you are circling around uh i will say with that 11 you take something in which is there is a small plume of smoke uh a little further down the top of the canyon face uh, that seems to be emitted from a small uh, cave or kind of like a, a little almost like beehive-esque uh, or bee, uh, honeycomb-esque kind of like divot into the rock. Um, seeing it, she'll kind of glance down, kind of uh, wave her hand down, just like waving like that and then pointing forward. Okay. Yeah, can we Hopefully see it from our, our in, yeah. something's going on? If Sin points it out, or is it not visible? Uh, I will say no. If Sin points it out, it's it's visible. Uh, you have to strain your eyes for it, but you just see this the tiniest plume of smoke, uh, as if from a very carefully managed campfire. Can I ask a, like a geography question here? Absolutely. So we're, we're moving slowly up a cliff face, not through it, not down. Correct. Uh, well, basically, it's a winding cavern uh, or kind of winding uh, canyon that cl that is and bounded by cliff faces. Got it. And so the the plume of smoke is where it's in relation to all of this? On one of the canyon uh, wall faces, uh, there is a small divot much further down from Sin's position, but on her same side, uh, it seems to be a small tunnel. Shh. So uh, got it. Us? So so sin uh, so uh kerosene uh will stick her head through the back window which does not actually have any glass on it <laughs> and just go hey 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 if if those are your friends or enemies we can blow it up just have the walls come in <laughs> and um no more campfire uh you're saying this to the stranger right to max I'm saying it to everybody in the car because oh, okay. I stuck my head through the window. <laughs> if those are your friends or enemies, we can blow it up. Yeah. Yeah. Surprise. Boom. Or it could be another settlement, girl, just uh, full of regular folk like us. Not our settlement. Sin is not there, but the girl does have a point. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you feel a vague sense of uh, approval, uh, Kerosene. <laughs> We, uh, we can go see them. Maybe they're friendly. Maybe they're not. But if they're not friendly, then we're stuck. Canyon makes it hard to fight. Makes it hard to maneuver. Would you like me to go look, Maguire? Far as I'm concerned, we best off just driving on past. If these folks have a problem with us, they can come out and tell us ourselves. And I light them on fire. And then kerosene will light them on fire. <laughs> yeah, I think both, you can't see kerosene smiling, but it's like very obvious that she's like cocking her head and then she'll pull back and now she's she's back out of the car, standing on her little platform. Possibly jumping up and down with excitement. Okay. So. Can you take joy in the little things? Yeah. <laughs> like awesome. potentially blowing up canyon walls. Yeah. So how are you guys going to uh, 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 maneuver here? What do you guys want to do? Yes, I mean, we're driving up. Yeah, at this point, I just want to go. Uh, I, I just want to go as fast as we can go without uh, like fucking up the car. Ah. Uh, and just like 
just head straight on by these people and see if we get into trouble. Kerosene uh, hears that we need to go super fast, so she actually comes back into the like the rear view window that would normally be there uh, and grabs a little packet of gasoline and still attached to her little bungee cord. She leaps up over the car. You hear her like scampering down to the engine that's sticking up out, out in front and like she's ready to juice it. Okay. All right. So you guys uh, get ready for this. You see the stranger uh, pulled that sawed off that he had uh, and uh, just kind of like pull it up, look at you and like salute you with it. Uh, as he uh, opens it, checks the shells to make sure they're, uh, the powder's dry and everything is uh, 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 copacetic, and then snaps uh, the barrel shut. And you guys begin to move. Slow. Think, yep, sorry, go ahead. Daxa will, if kerosene's on the front, Daxa will scramble through. Like, I think the window isn't very large and it's kind of uncomfortable how small a space Daxo manages to wriggle through and ends up back on that back platform. Like you, it's just like, you just watch it. It's like a twist of cloth in this little cloak. And then he's kind of crouched hanging on just like kind of looking, um, looking around the car. Okay. Tank uh, truck murder ex- thing. <laughs> the Lancer tank as it were. So, uh, as you guys uh, make your way, you, uh, I think, start slowly kind of like driving uh, along. And then at your signal, you gun it. Uh, you gun the Lancer tank forward. Uh, this is very important. Sin, where are you in relation to them and how far along? Mm. Um, I think once seeing the smoke coming up, She'll she'll still be ahead, but not by quite as much okay. uh, as before, just in case. Yeah, and you know, McGuire down. like through the through the windshield or you know maybe out the side is probably gonna like gesture to you like to indicate we're going through, oh. so you know what we're doing. Okay, so in that case, uh. I was going to say, is there anything you want to make sure that you do, Sin, uh, as uh, this, uh, as the Lancer starts gunning forward? Um, do you say do? Yeah. Uh, In order to do a move, you got to do the move. So that's the question. Is there anything that you want to do here? Oh, jeez. Um, let's see. Uh, no, we're just gonna go. We're gonna go. It's gonna be fine. We're just gonna go real fast. Okay. So fast. The <laughs> fastest. All right. Um <laughs> actually, so this is my my question though here is are you trying to stand overwatch or keep an eye out? Is there anything in particular you are wanting to do? Hmm. Um, I mean, I think passing where the smoke is going probably would uh, she would be kind of because if it's on the same side she's not gonna be able to see it super well but she'd probably like look down to see if she can see anything in the hole uh okay so go ahead and read a situation for me i'd love to all right um does that go with anything uh that roll this one roll plus sharp for me okay Mm, eight. Okay. On a seven to nine, ask one. What's my best escape route? Way in, way past. Which enemy is most vulnerable to me? Which enemy is the biggest threat? What should I be on the lookout for? What's my enemy's true position? Who's in control here? Would you like to know? I'm going to say... Um, which enemy is my biggest threat? Uh, as you are looking into this hole... Uh, you see two very kind of grubby uh, looking men that seem to be uh, clad in these kind of like studded, spiked uh, uh, outfits. And essentially, uh, they seem to be in the middle of some sort of repast. And the whole thing about this is um, they are covered in this uh, equipment and uh, on either side of them, 
uh, you realize are two uh, kind of like dirt bike style cycles where yours is a muscle cycle that's just been very like clearly modified and also um basically I'm sorry i think you what you mean to say is a real cycle yeah a real like you have a real cycle but these things seem to be very uh built for mobility and not much yeah. else uh but i will say also clipped to the kind of bandoliers around each of these kind of like studded outfits you see that there are some nasty looking assortments of bottles and what to hear appear to be like stitched and kind of bound canisters with clips on them. Well, I see. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Cole Drake. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> I I think that uh, uh, she she is gonna just she can always turn around. She's gonna start getting it, and then she's just gonna start um, waving <laughs> waving a little erratically. <laughs> Um, but something that is going to try and indicate that you need to move fast past this hole in the wall, the wall hole. <laughs> Gotta pay the toll. Up. <laughs> All right. Uh, so wall hole. yeah. So I will tell you this, this is, um, this is kind of like, I want to say this is almost like a, a sub, uh, a subterfuge move, uh, when it's not clear whether you're, nope, never mind. This is, I would say you're standing overwatch for an ally, so roll cool for me. I knew I picked this for a reason <laughs> and not any of the other things I should have put points into. <laughs> um, that's going to be a 13. Okay, on a 13. Uh, so I will say this. When you stand overwatch for an ally, roll plus cool on a hit. If anyone attacks or interferes with your ally, you attack them and inflict harm as established, as well as warning your ally on a 10 plus choose one oh, yeah. and you inflict your harm before they can carry out their attack or interference and you inflict t or and you inflict terrible harm. So uh, tell me uh, how what this looks like as you hear um, the panicked sounds of movement uh, that seem to accommodate uh, that seem to come and accompany with uh, you, your um, uh, your weaving and how you respond in kind to assist your friends. Um, I think as soon as she makes some sort of gesture that is hopefully clear, uh, she's going to reach down and, and grab her rifle that is so trustily at her side. And then as she drives past, just hold it behind her and uh, shoot into the hole. Okay. All right. Maybe it'll land on someone. They were standing right there. Yeah. In this case, though, I will say that, yeah, as... Uh, you hear somebody kind of like barreling out as the with the revving of this dirt bike. Uh, and then uh, as uh, as if timed for when you hear this sound approaching the uh, lip of the um, like the cave face, uh, you inflict harm equal to the harm rating of your weapon. Uh, so go ahead and uh, tell me what that harm rating is. I believe you had a rifle. What have you got uh, listed there? I do. Um, one scoped rifle that has a harm rating of. Um, would you, would you say that this is far? Uh, I would say by the the point at which you have moved forward, you've gained enough distance to say that this is probably a far target. Oh, good. Uh, that would be three harm then. Okay. Uh, are you aiming for the bike or are you aiming for the? Uh, I'm aiming for the dude. Okay. Uh, it's as, hard to ride when you got holes in you. Exactly. Harder, hopefully. Oh, yeah. As soon as uh, this person barrels out, uh, the rifle connects, and you see them completely uh, just skid along the side of the cliff face wall uh, and down. Uh, you, they still kind of manage to stay on the bike and still kind of, like, try, but they're, like, pretty much uh, uh, kind of, like, leaning to one side in the saddle. I need to actually change the music real quick uh, as the, his buddy barrels out soon after. That said... Run him over, run him over, run him over. Yeah. What are uh, the... Uh, what is the Lancer I'm doing? I'm it, baby. All right. Um, pedal to the metal. Pedal I to think, the metal. 
Kerosene is absolutely helping you here. She has dunked her uh, gas mask proboscis into her little gasoline sippy cup. Uh huh. And uh, has now like stuck her like head into the funnel and is very clearly like uh, putting gasoline into the engine directly the way that it's flaring out. So you have a little bit more speed. Excellent. So I will tell you this. Um, let me go ahead and read this corresponding move, but basically you are gunning it. You are making, uh, 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 uh as much time as possible to get through this place. Uh, so this would be a road move. Uh, yeah, you are trying to out distance another vehicle. Uh, when you try to out distance another vehicle, roll plus cool modified by the vehicle's relative speed on a 10 plus. All right. You outdistance them and break away on a 7 to 9, choose 1. Uh, I will say this. You get plus 1 forward to this because of Kerosene's move uh, from earlier. Uh, I was going to ask. Yeah, so uh, with the mask. So uh, uh, count that uh, forward. 1 plus 1 forward. Oh, uh, I mean, listen, we're talking about juice and stuff. Can we can we juice this roll even more? Do, uh, do I get anything for Kerosene... Uh, yeah. spitting fuel into the engine i will absolutely i will tell you this spitting fuel into the engine will <laughs> increase your speed uh to the point where you are not as out uh out uh, uh kind of motored by these uh these tiny um dirt bikes so that'll make the difference you still get plus one but it also negates the penalty so got it yeah go ahead what are you gonna do okay cool so uh we're gonna roll 2d6 plus cool. cool yeah all right so we're starting at a seven uh my cool is zero so seven plus one eight all right uh so in this case you overtake them but your vehicle suffers minus one uh one harm armor piercing the same uh you don't overtake them but you can drive them into a place you choose they outdistance you but their vehicle suffers one harm uh armor piercing the same Hmm. Uh, all of those are juicy. Yeah, all these are very good. Um, I think. <sighs> all right, I think I'm gonna go with we don't overtake them, but drive them into a place that we choose. So, what I'm gonna say is, um, oh, sorry. Wait, this is that was wrong. Um. Pardon me, that was my oh, mistake. Oh, out, out distance yeah. is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Out distance them and break away, but your vehicle suffers minus uh, one harm AP. You don't escape them, but you can go to ground in a place you choose. They mm. overtake you, but their vehicle suffers one harm uh, armor piercing. So it sounds like the second option, right, is what you would have gone with. Uh, uh, no, that's actually, yeah, that, that actually changes the calculus now that I'm reading yeah. it correctly. Um, I think think i'm gonna have to inflict harm on the vehicle okay uh so, so okay i'm gonna i'm gonna take the first option yeah we outdistance them but we're gonna take uh one harm yeah absolutely uh you outdistance them uh as uh all of you are kind of like uh i think sin as you're kind of like looking from the top down you see the lancer pull forward zooming gunning as fast as possible you see uh, the flare of the engine as kerosene spits gasoline uh, to kind of juice it. And uh, it goose, it kind of like lurches forward with every kind of spit. And on top of that, uh, what you see, however, is that uh, you guys, uh, I think with that first burst of speed overcorrect uh, and maybe skid against the canyon wall uh, as, uh, but very quickly you, uh, you correct uh, but you pull so far forward that they are uh, pretty much uh, quickly outmatched uh, by kind of like the handling of the vehicle as you traverse the cliff, uh, the canyons. Now, I guess they weren't friendly after all. So, at, should, should I let me bone them up? So at this point, I will say this: you guys are a good distance ahead of them. They are still in pursuit. Uh, I would say at this point, you're about one third of the way through the canyon as you've kind of like lurched forward. Uh, so once again, I want to know what uh, actually while this is trans uh, like uh, transpiring, I say like Max starts kind of like looking for an opportunity to uh, take a pot shot and kind of like begins drawing a bead 
uh, on these uh, characters at a distance to keep an overwatch to see if they get closer. Uh, Daxo, what are you doing? I think Daxo is looking for an op- opportunity to, um, I feel like he's really outside of his element here. He's a sneaky boy. Um, he's a sneaky, creepy boy. He's, you know, the whole popping up and, and, you know, he likes to pop up where he's not expected and, um, and be completely harmless and non-threatening, um, in every conceivable way. Uh huh. Um, but I think right now hanging on the back of this is just kind of like hanging out on the side of this car. It's very exciting, but, um, <laughs> with all this, this, this yeah, I don't, I, I think, think of something useful to do. I don't feel if you want. I, I would take a suggestion because I'm not feel I, I as a player I'm struggling to think of what I can do because I've got a spear. I I mean I also have a suggestion. I yeah, I think that kerosene uh, pokes her like you see her 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 head. Um, I think as we were speeding a little bit away, uh, she eases up on the engine and uh, she just Daxo, throw the lance, throw the lance. You're oh, sitting uh, in the Lancer's. Uh, uh, is there is there a Lance chilling perch. back here? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh oh oh! I did not know that. I have a regular last. I have a Boy Scout spear. If there's a fucking Lance, yeah, kerosene has definitely prepped you with explosives in the car. There are explosives <laughs> everywhere in this vehicle. That's Even I'm exciting. an explosive. <laughs> All right. So it sounds like in you- a pinch. Yeah, it sounds like what you guys Explosives, are explosives, try- living and otherwise. Yeah. So I think you, yeah, you see like Daxo's hanging hanging on here, like kind of. I think the hood's blown back in this breeze, so just like just like, um, you can't see the smile, but the eyes are still doing the yeah thing. Um, f- way too open, way too wide for speeding through a dusty wasteland at velocity. Um, and just goes. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I can do that. Yeah. Uh, Kerosene is now bouncing a little bit up and down now on like the hood of the car, just chanting your name. <laughs> uh, Daxo, um, Daxo. Yeah. So Daxo picks this up and I think kind of gives it a experimental heft. Um, and the camera pans very briefly to a, uh, to a javelin badge, mm-hmm. um, on this very <laughs> tired sash. Um, and, uh, yeets. Um, all right. So yes. roll plus roll hard. <laughs> roll for yeet. Roll plus hard. What, what, uh, let's see what you can get. Can I spend that forward on this? Uh, I feel like I need it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you have or plus do, do one. I, I yeah. have to do that before I roll, right? No, no, you can roll. Uh, you can decide oh, before or after. Oh. <laughs> yeah, how'd you do? <laughs> I'm not going to spend it because it won't help. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> that was a... Uh, um, I have a plus one, but that was a. I don't know if the camera can see that. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Oh Snake no, eyes. Snake Eyes! Oh, wow. Oh my God. This uh, goes great. Well. I feel good about this. Oh shit. Okay, I gotta. I gotta make a hard move here. Um, I think. <laughs> Does Dak? I mean, uh, listen. I know exactly what I would do here. Yeah, I, I know what like I would it. do, but I'm a bastard, so I oh, also. Oh man, not like I this. feel like I know what it is. <laughs> yeah, you know what? What what happens here? Zach, so tell me what what. Oh, yeah. what happens here? A uh-huh. hard move. Yeah. An explosive lance that gets. Uh, I think I hit one of our wheels. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Yeah. I think I think it's like I think there's um the weight is just way off and Daxo like um so Daxo's just like oh okay I got this and is hanging on on the one side and then we just hit something and it's just like it adjusts as he goes to throw it and it's like wah, wah, and like lands like four feet in front of the uh in front of the tank okay ooh all right so the front wheel uh as you throw this explosive I'm oh, gonna there say there goes kerosene uh well here's <laughs> Uh, here's what I will tell you is that this explosive probably does a four harm spread. Um, so this is actually, let me see. Yeah. Well, I did get an advancement since I fucked that up so badly. Uh, all right. So when you suffer V harm, roll V harm plus, uh, plus V harm suffered on a 10 plus you lose control and your attacker chooses one. You crash, you spin out. 
Uh, on a seven to nine, you can be forced to swerve. Your <laughs> swerve, uh, your attacker chooses one. You give ground, you're driven off course, or forced onto a new course. Your car takes one harm, armor piercing right in the transmission. On a miss, you swerve, but recover without disadvantage. So roll again for me. You are rolling plus four. Actually, no, I will say that this max says out at three because that's how, um, uh, I was going to say that's how, uh, I rolled like shit. Yeah. Wait, what's the, what's the plus four? What's uh, the plus for three? V harm suffered. I rolled like hot garbage. Yeah, I oh rolled Lord. a two and a one. Okay. So Yay. you rolled a seven on a seven to nine. You're forced to swerve. Your attacker chooses one. You give ground. Wait, wait. Yeah. Oh God! Wait, is that bad? Did I misunderstand that? No, that Did was good. No, no, no. The less it is, the the okay. better it is for us. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. So here's the thing. Actually, um, yeah, I will say it's four harm that was suffered. Uh, so write down that the uh, lancer has taken four harm. Uh, you give ground. You're driven off course or forced onto a newer course. Your harm takes one harm armor piercing right in the transmission. I'm gonna say you give ground. Uh, so what ends up happening, I think, is that. Uh, rather than completely ruin uh, the chassis and the wheel, the wheel kind of like swerves a little bit. And then uh, I think, uh, what was it? Max kind of pushes uh, one side of the wheel uh, to help you uh, overcorrect uh, McGuire and the wheel corrects, uh, but not before uh, bumping and jumping and swerving. Uh, Kerosene, I need this you. This is where it's Bloody very hell. Hell. Thank God What's I have Lance's kid. I've got a a, a a bungee cord on me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, perfect. So you are going to yeah. What is, remind me? Jostled though. Uh, is it still attached to the ball? vehicle? Yeah, you get. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen here. Uh, I was going to say uh, this is what I will say that happens is um, I need you uh, to. I think this is going to be basically keeping your cool. So do something under fire. Um, okay. This is to to keep uh, on top of what you're doing. If you can't roll this, uh, you won't be able to juice the car anymore, and they will overtake you. All right. Okay. This is uh, cool. Pl plus cool. Yeah. Sweet. Y'all are just making me roll my highlighted stats today. Um. Nine. Okay, on a 7-9, you flinch, hesitate, or stall. The MC can offer you a worse outcome, a hard bargain, or an ugly choice. On a miss, be prepared for the worst. So, I will tell you this. On a 7-9, oh. what what do you do that, uh, what hesitation, what flinch, uh, what happens uh, that kind of, like, throws you off your game for this coming round? My mass gets jostled. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, honestly, like the impact you can feel. It fe could only be that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You feel a uh, guzzle kind of like almost. I think what happens is rather than taking any kind of shrapnel or harm, uh, what instead happens is you feel like something like as if one of the straps has torn on one of the four uh, uh, gas mask straps. Uh, For a split second, you see the lower half of Kirasin's face. Uh, there's just a, a starkly pale, like jaw and chin, uh, very thin lips before the mask gets righted again. Yeah, absolutely. I will tell you this, that is going to cost you your ability to juice the car. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you are still alive. You are still on the car. Thanks to the Lancer. Um, next, uh, you get to, uh, the, around this kind of like curve uh, as you are making it through the canyon. And now uh, I'm going to say that uh, we're going to check and see how everybody's doing. Sin, you're still riding up top. What are you doing here? Oh, Lord. Uh, well, I think on... I think she, she as she's been riding, she's been keeping an eye on where she's going, but also kind of trying to keep an eye on what's happening. And um, I think... At one moment when she is looking forward, she hears some sort of terrible sound, a terrible crunching, skidding, yelling sort of sound, and looks back and is like, oh, shit. Um, and then it's going to 
Mm, how steep is this cliff? Uh, I will say it, this, the cliff face is probably about 30 feet up uh, off of the, uh, the uh, kind of like the ground of the ravine. Or the how, canyon, how, rather. How steep is the face bit? Are we talking straight up and down, 90 degree? Uh, I would say about a, I would say about a 45 degree angle. Oh, she's going to turn around and ride down it and ride back to where they are. Okay. All right. Uh, so you're going to ride back down. Uh, is yeah. there, is there anything you want to do to support here as you're kind of like trying to close the distance? Sure. Um, let's see. Um, well, I, I think that, uh, how far away are the pursuers at this point? Uh, I will say that with that kind of like explosion that went off, uh, they have caught up uh, so that they are just uh, not very far behind the vehicle. They were much further away before, uh, but that kind of uh, that unfortunate occurrence allows them to catch up uh, and begin like making to overtake uh, the uh, Lancer. Mm -hmm. Um, well, as she's heading back, uh, let's let's just shoot at them. Okay. <laughs> can't, can't. Uh, it at least can do something. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, go ahead and give me. Um, yeah, this is going to be. Let's see. You are providing suppressing fire, so go ahead mm -hmm. and roll uh, plus uh, hard, I believe. Um, yeah, or you're laying down fire, so roll plus hard. Oh, I have regrets about how I set this up. Uh, that. Oh, dang, that's going to be a six. All right. Uh, so in this case, Cyril, Cyril Figgis. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think uh, you the shot goes wide, uh, and you uh, feel uh, as the shot goes wide, you hear uh, your rifle jam. Uh, so uh, that you're going to have to take a few moments to fix it. You don't know if you're going to be able to do that and be able to ride down and assist them. Well, um, uh, yeah. Let's see. Is this is this one she's already gotten down? Uh, I will say that you at this point, the only thing you can do is close the distance with them and ride towards them. Uh, if you were That's to, fine. you can correct the rifle, but that will t be the thing that you have to do. Um, I'll go ahead and close distance. She grabbed a lot of stuff. She's got stuff. Okay. Mike's got stuff. Okay. <laughs> so cool. much stuff. Yeah, but until uh, until uh, you fix that, your rifle is now considered jammed. Um, okay, so the Lancer, what are you guys uh, doing? Uh, uh, let's start with McGuire you're, as you are driving. Okay, here are my questions. Okay. One, how many bikers are there it's at this point? It's just the two so far. And they're on their bikes. They are on their bikes. One... Uh, looks pretty uh, worse for wear, but has recovered and is like trying to close the distance. Uh, he's further behind the one that seems to have not been shot by Sin. Okay, how close are they? Uh, I will say uh, with the closer one, about three car lengths. Okay, that's close enough. Uh, fuck this car's transmission. McGuire uh, looks looks in the rear view see you know after recovering from this this explosion uh sees sin starting to come down from the other direction but like clearly something is wrong with her rifle she's not gonna make it uh and says fuck it throws the car into reverse and i'm gonna like hope that this guy runs right into my uh, right into my rear bumper, and I'm just gonna. All right, awesome. Go right over him in his bike. Ooh, oh my God. Okay, in this case, you are. Uh, let me see. You're not. Yeah, you are using a vehicle uh, as a weapon. So that is exactly what I am trying to do here. Uh, so you, when you are behind the wheel, you can sucker someone, go aggro on them, or make a battle move uh, uh, against a person using your vehicle as a weapon. So this is one on one. Uh, roll plus hard. All right. Uh, cool. What uh, move am I? What move do we think that we're doing here? Am I? Am I going aggro? Yeah, you are. No, this is this is basically. Uh, this is not exchanging uh, exchanging harm. This is, I believe, it is single combat. 
Uh, so in this case, let me ask you something though. Is your primary uh, drive mm -hmm. to hit? Yeah, okay. Is your primary drive to hit the driver or to take out the bike? I'm a little more aiming to like crush the bike. Okay, cool. But the driver is on the bike. It's kind of a package deal in my mind. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, but you and uh, everybody else in New York. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know. So. It, All right. So roll single combat. Okay. So plus hard. All right. Seven plus hard two nine. Okay. So choose one. You uh wait. Pardon me. On a uh, seven to nine, choose two. You inflict terrible harm. You suffer little harm. You take definite and undeniable control of it. You impress, dismay, or frighten your enemy. Uh, what would you like to do? Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, two? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. And I'm, lo I'm looking at... Um, I'm looking at use a vehicle as a weapon against another vehicle, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. So... Uh, so yeah, uh, so I'm going to uh, inflict terrible harm for okay. sure, mm -hmm. um, and seeing we we've already taken enough harm to uh, to to our vehicle, so I will choose to take uh, minimal harm to the vehicle as well. Cool. Okay. In this case, uh, you are doing a direct hit, uh, which inflicts three harm plus uh, it's massive. Uh, so minus the target vehicle's massive and armor. Treat zero harm and less as uh, V harm. So let me ask you, uh, remind me, what size uh, is this? I believe your massive is three, right? Uh, the Lancer is three, yeah. Yeah, so uh, all told, the vehicle does uh, seven harm uh, directly to uh, this uh, when you're able to ram or T-bone, you inflict the harm of a direct hit minus your target's armor and suffer the harm of a glancing hit. Okay, so in this case, you hit this bike full on, running roughshod over it. It takes seven points of harm uh, as uh, you just hear a sickening crunch uh, of uh, this thing run under your wheels. Uh, leaving the uh, rider uh, kind of pinned under it, but not before uh, you hear a uh, pretty nasty sound of a pin, a pulled pin, a clip, and then uh, as whatever kind of like shrapnel grenade frag meant a grenade had been in this guy's bandolier goes off. Uh, so in this case, kind of like as a hair trigger, almost like a dead man switch at this point. Oh, there I go again. Yeah. <laughs> so Wait, is this on the back of the vehicle? This is on the back of the vehicle. Uh, oh, that's healthy. Yeah. I'm only attached by a bungee cord. This is literally this is literally table tennis. But yeah. <laughs> with a child. Uh, wait, what's the what's the uh, what's the ball tether on ball. the pole? Tether ball. Yeah, yeah. it's tether ball. Yeah. It's tether ball. Uh, the bungee cord clip is at the back of the vehicle. To be clear. So I will tell you this: it, these uh, frag grenades are only uh, three points of harm, so they only do two. What uh, do you mean only? Uh, That's a fucking lot in Apocalypse World. <laughs> yeah, it is. Not uh, D&D over it's here, It's only a frag grenade to the face. Thanks, Zach. Yeah, but <laughs> on the right side, that's one less bike you got to worry with. Am I not a great and beneficent GM? Um, or MC in this case. Uh, the <laughs> vehicle takes two more harm. How's it doing? hi yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we're at six by my count did we have four previously mangling my baby mm -hmm. y'all can't fit on the bike with me <laughs> yeah so <sighs> as uh, in that case still we must... pursuing i thought bike? i chose take less harm you did but it does three and now it did only two. Oh wait that's right um remind me do you guys have armor yeah we should yeah. The, the car uh, has armor. armor it's called the a car, tank yeah I fucking the car hope has... it does yeah, the car has one armor, so it should be so reduced. One yeah, damage. it's yeah. it's it's actually only taken four harm. Then it knocks two out from two separate attacks. 
Uh, you okay. are. You guys are doing. I was okay. relying on that armor. Yeah. No, we got as, it. Like, it's all good. This thing is armored. Yeah. Uh, I will say this. Okay, let me double check. Uh, when a vehicle suffers regular harm, there are two considerations. Uh, and how much harm blows through to the people inside. Uh, okay. All right. So I will tell you this. Or those hanging on outside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, You've put your children on the outside of the vehicle. Smart. Yeah, I think... <laughs> uh, let me see. I will say that... Everybody I knows that the inside of the vehicle is the death <laughs> trap part of it. All kinds of things flying around in there. <laughs> if you're outside yeah, you of the vehicle and you get, you get thrown clear, that's safe. <laughs> <laughs> outside the crumple zone. Yeah, I will. I will say this. Uh, crumple zone. Okay, so serious damage, no, functional no, no, damage, no, no, no. crumple zone. But can be. So I will tell you this: all that matters is how much damage it takes at one point. And so it's taken three harm from that missile, or not the missile, the uh, the lance. Uh, so you know for a fact that once you get out of here, you're going to have to field patch it. Um, it takes two harm, which can blow through to the passengers. Uh, I am going to say, um, let me see, uh, kerosene, make me one more, um, uh, yep. yeah, here we go, here we go. Cause you are the most exposed. Goodbye. So it would make the most sense. I'm still attached. You are st if I fall off the thing, and get dragged. Yeah. What is terrible this? What idea. am I rolling? Uh, you're this rolling a terrible plan. <laughs> you're a rolling plus cool. Okay. Should, next time. Let me blow them up. <laughs> let me blow them up. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! What did what happened? I don't want to hear that. Oh, snake eyes, guys! Snake eyes! Snake eyes, guys! So it's Look, three. That's right. the worst one. Okay. On. So yeet, yeet. the yeet worst two. Oh, she's out. Uh, <laughs> no, I will. That's that's two harm. So fill your clock. Two ticks. Um, I already had one from our last encounter with the uh, dude, so uh, I'm full up to three. Okay, so remind me, what is the number at the end of the clock uh, swerve here? Twelve. Uh, okay, wait, hold on. There's wait, you mean the clock? Yeah, so like there's there's a, a, a harm clock that you have. Yeah, I know. I filled to three. Okay. You there's fill. three segments, and then the fourth is split into three. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So technically, you have six segments. Yeah, I'm. I, I filled my first segment. Okay. Okay. So you filled your first uh, segment. All right. So at that point, I will take. Uh, I will tell you this: as you adjust your mask, kerosene, uh, you take shrapnel uh, from that uh, last hit, uh, and you realize that, like where the you have been hit, the bleeding starts, and you try to cover it, it does not stop. Uh, you, as soon as you are able to, you are going to need to stop to recover, to stabilize this wound. Um, I will tell you, however, am I still on the vehicle? Yeah. I, Ooh, this is another thing. This is more of like, oh, well, yeah, you are still on the vehicle as held up by the bungee. Um, but you're kind of like fishtailing around at this point. Uh, Daxo, Daxo will grab kerosene and like, uh, kind of drag her back towards the little window. Well. Yeah. I'm bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> Horribly. <laughs> okay. All right. And I will tell you this though, with one with his one shum under the wheels, uh that one biker that was tailing uh behind that hadn't taken any uh damage yet, um he he reads uh the situation and then turns and uh, immediately 180s out. Oh, uh, can I can I grab kerosene with one hand and throw my shitty little boy spout, scout spear with the other you may certainly try what would you like could to i do? light your spear on fire yes. as you throw it because you're holding me by my one prosthesis but yeah. i'm dangling off the side with my other so i flip it up i see as you're about to throw it so oh, toss it amazing. and then i'm gonna make it flame Okay. Can we do that, Zach? Can we do I, that? Look how nice the children are playing. <laughs> I will. Yay! I will certainly um, allow that. I advanced, and I took. I added a point in hard because <laughs> I failed horribly at hard, uh -huh. and Daxo feels incredibly bad. This is all his fault. Uh, do uh, do single combat. All right. I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna roll hard. Yeah. Roll plus hard. 
I'm pretty sure that that's what that means. Oh, fuck yeah. That's pretty good. That's going to be... Would I technically uh, be helping you in this case? Would this be HX? Uh, I mean, we are turning it into fire. You are. I will say roll to help in this case. Yes. yes. I believe that that is cool, but let me double check. I thought... It's oh, very it ironic if setting a spear uh, on fire. Oh, it's roll, your... it's roll history. Pardon me. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. All right, back. So we've got two... That's so much better. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be a 12. All right. Oh, shit. So Daxo, you take two to the roll. All right. That's gonna be, uh, so that's gonna be a total of plus four to the roll, which mm. was already, which was eight on the dice. So that is a, a dirty 12. Oh, okay. hell yeah, baby. All right. So now we're talking. So now you get to choose, uh, I believe three. Uh, in this case, we're doing single combat. You inflict terrible harm. You suffer little harm. After your exchange, uh, uh, let me see, on a miss, uh, but the first, on a 10, both. So you actually get to do both of these things. Um, after you exchange harm, do you prefer to end the fight now or fight on? If both of you prefer to end the fight now, it ends. If both of you prefer to fight on, it continues. And you must make the move again. So I think I'm hitting somebody that's running away from me. Exactly. That would be my argument. Yeah. I'm, I'm chucking that spear in this motherfucker's back. Yeah, at this point, I would say that instead, what this is is you are you are playing cat to this guy's mouse. Uh, as mm-hmm. you, so, in this case, when you're the cat, roll a plus cool. On a hit, you ch- you catch your prey out. On a ten plus, you've driven them first uh, to a place of your choosing. Say where. That would still be an eleven for yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. So in this case, yeah, where do they? Uh, where do you manage to kind of like pinpoint exactly where you hit them? Like, as they're, like, turning, what are you doing? Oh, I know exactly what I'm doing. Um, uh, Daxo throws, and he watches the spear go down and right through the calf, um, jamming the right foot into the rear brake Mm -hmm. of this muscle cycle and piercing into the engine, which has the very cute, if I may, Zach, uh-huh. the very cute results of meaning that his rear brake locks up and he loses all traction and basically will crash almost immediately. It's also on fire and it's, and it's in the engine. Fire. So uh, I will tell you this. Uh, he careens headlong uh, first into the wall of the canyon. Uh, uh, the calf damage being done. By the way, how much damage did that calf uh, do? I don't know. You mean the spear? The spear to the calf, do rather? Bold of you to assume I know what I'm doing. Uh, it's two harm. Uh, so I will say three, and we'll add it to a four uh, for the fire that it was uh, lit on. Uh, he impacts the wall hard, uh, and then you see slowly but surely those plumes of smoke begin to curl as uh, his unmoving form catches and ignites. Uh, do we both do like a very childish yeah and it is on this moment as you guys pull free of the uh canyon uh beginning to kind of like pull uh a little bit north of where you know the encampment will be uh that we are going to take our 10 minute break as you guys take the time to, to yeah go ahead with you mean as we watch as this family vacation bl- blitzes off into the dust with fire behind them uh-huh yeah absolutely it's a it, it it's mad max national lampoons uh uh family vacation national lampoons, mad max. wasteland vacation there we go however before you get to the edge of this precipice uh all of you realize that you have to stop because kerosene is hurt so I'm going to put on some music. You tell me what the fuck you guys are doing. The blood is on the outside. Uh, all right. Is kerosene in the vehicle? That is very uh, Are you still holding on to me? Da- have you pulled me up onto yeah, the Lancer pad? I, I, yeah, I think Daxo like, um, has, uh, you know, kind of uh, after we ha- shared a brief moment of like, yeah, after like this, you know, dude died horribly. Yeah. And, um, then, I, then, and then the blood loss has made me very dizzy. <laughs> Yeah, um, and I think, um, I, I think, uh, yeah, uh, 
Let's I'm, yeah, I feel like Daxo just kind of feeds you it feeds you into the cab very um, ungracefully. Okay. Um, so yeah, you know, at, at this point Maguire has has obviously like kachunked the uh the Lancer back into drive uh and I'm like you know barreling out of the canyon but looking over my shoulder shouting uh, oi lad you got her in the vehicle uh yeah as you're saying that like you you see a kerosene kind of being shoved head first Hello. into the cab um very bloody uh as uh you guys are doing this max has stowed uh the um the uh sawed off into his weight uh waist belt uh, and is pulling free a bunch of gauze bandages uh, from one of his forearms and is looking for the entrance wound of uh, the shrapnel. Uh, what uh, And what are you guys doing? Are you guys uh, pulling off somewhere? Are you going to try to road patch this? What are you going to do? Uh, I mean, as soon as we're clear of the canyon, I'm going to look for a place to stop the vehicle. Like, the... You know, we're we are not going on until this is resolved. Yeah, easy easy enough. You find a place uh, just off the kind of like edge of the ravine that uh, climbs back up into higher territory, uh, growing kind of level with the rest of the canyon uh, walls that you just arrived down. Uh, it seems to kind of like blossom out. Um, but you're able to drive up and off. Uh, Sin, where are you in all of this? Um, so I think at this point did not make it back before the, uh, the two pursuers were just gone. They were just gone. So, uh, I imagine kind of make a loop and, uh, riding pretty closely to the car at this point. So whenever the place is found to stop, um, Sin would also stop and, and start like fixing her gun while she kind of goes over to the car, but that would all stop once she sees what's going on. Absolutely. Yeah. So like as soon as soon as we're in like the safest spot that we can be immediately outside the canyon here, like, you know, Maguire puts it in park uh and is like over the you know, like over the seat with Max uh helping with kerosene. Okay. And and just like cursing up a goddamn storm. Yeah, yeah and, fucking and bloody hell. Yeah, at that, at that point. Yeah, fucking bloody hell. Sin, Sin would have parked and is walking up, like, first looking at her gun, like, can you believe this piece of crap? I paid so much for that. And then looking up, seeing what's going on, and being like, what on earth is going on here? And just like, Sin, practically the blood dives is on into the, the outside. <laughs> the girl got hit. What? Boom. And like, uh, why? How did you let this happen? He didn't let me blow them up. Should have let me blow them up. What all right, all right, just stop talking, stop <laughs> talking. And, uh, She's just lolling around. As, yeah, how f yeah, you gotta sorry. keep your strength up. How far did we get from the, the wrecked bikes? Uh, pretty far, I would say, that you guys uh, wrecked them about midway through the canyon. Uh, okay. So I'd say, yeah, just a f like hundreds of feet. Uh, so you're, you're a good ways off at this point. Well, like, hundred, like 500 feet? Sure. If that's uh, how long do you think the canyon is? I mean, it's one more million of a ravine, feet. But one million <laughs> feet. <laughs> um, I I think uh, Daxo has done his creepy disappearing thing. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say you're 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 probably less than a mile. It's less than a mile back. Let's put it that way. Yeah, Daxo. I think Daxo at some point after feeding kerosene in uh, has disappeared, um, likely jumped off the back of said vehicle. OK, um, so as you guys are cursing up the storm, uh, you see um, Max uh, just looking at both of you uh, with the, the gauze in one hand, just says, I need a shot, Blade. I think Sin would have one on her. She almost before he stops speaking, like hands one over. Okay. And as soon as uh, he takes it, um, he, I think what he does is with one of your pilot lights, um, uh, 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 kerosene, he uh, lets the blade sit uh, in front of it, uh, in front of that heat to try to sterilize it. Um, I do have to say, uh, 
whenever someone first handed over though she would not let go of it right away <laughs> and just be like if you don't fix her or if you let anything happen your and, ass is mine <laughs> and he's just kind of like almost like animalistically just kind of like nodding and like barely like paying attention as you do that as you say that uh instead he is working to try to save kerosene um, the shrapnel has embedded itself pretty deep in the meat of your arm, uh, that hasn't been cut off and in part of your bicep. Um, um, yeah. Marcy. Yeah. How do you feel about Maguire taking off your mask at this point? I think that... Curious, I've been playing her this way, so I'm not going to roll for this for myself, that she is loopy and losing blood. And I, I think it's very likely it hit an artery. So she's just like, woohoo, is not fully paying attention. If you okay. want to do well, it, you can. I, I'm, I'm try not just going to though. Yeah, I'm not just going to do it. Like, Maguire... It, if you want to try, bends, you can. Maguire sort of bends over you uh, and says, uh, Kerosene, go. Hmm? Hi. Can I take the mask off? What? No. Can I take the mask off? Why? Why you guys hate the mask off? I think Sin, Sin would grab Maguire and like kind of pull him back a little bit. Sin. All right. She's she bad. needs that. She might need that. But what are you going to do? So use... Stop the blood coming out of her face? It's coming out her arm. All right, it's about to get nasty. She could use a cold compress on her forehead and a slug of something stiff. And Am I wearing a mask? She like tries to like bat at it with one of the prosthetic. Like she's just, she's not paying attention. Kerosene girl, we ain't got time. Yeah. Can I take it off? I, I think if you want to take it off, you're going to need to decide to take it off. She's always going to say no. Yeah, because he's he's also not going to do it without. I have Kerosene's no ability permission. to stop you. Uh, yeah, is not happy some, about it. <laughs> there are some that that do give me that, but I have not taken those. All right. Uh, if he doesn't hear anything from you, like if if he doesn't get a response from you, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna look up some rules here. He's. I think what he's going to do uh, is like uh, tear off a a strip of his leather jacket. Like maybe he like tears the like the lapel off this biker jacket. He's gonna wad it up. He's gonna just sort of lift the bottom of the proboscis up mm -hmm. and put it between your teeth. Turn to Max and say, "All right, do it." And uh, at that point, he begins uh, kind of nods and begins fishing out uh, with the blade, the uh, shrapnel, uh, just very carefully trying to like pull it out as he kind of digs it. Uh, and then immediately, as soon as he begins pulling out the shrapnel, he begins uh, gauzing, uh, pulling out this kind of like like roll of gauze from uh, his pocket and begins stuffing the wound. Uh, and basically trying to do his best to kind of pinch together uh, the arteries to help it clot. Um, and I, you know, I hand him a flask. Uh, yeah, and of he, something high proof. Yeah, exactly. He's just trying to his best to kind of clean the wound uh, and like act on this. And he is going to use a move uh, called "You Don't Have a Future." I could offer you that, um, which is. He is going to op uh, automatically stabilize you, but is not going to heal harm. That is going to be on any one of you who wants to roll history with kerosene to uh, heal harm segments. Um, I will say this. Um, you are going to have plus two to the roll as Max is assisting you and is considered would, an automatic success. What would the uh, roll be under? Uh, the rule would be under, so that move uh, is custom to Max, uh, but the... Yeah, like, I've been angling to 
Uh, I've been angling for the heal another player's character's yeah, heart. Do it. Yeah. yeah, that is exactly what I'm looking for. So roll plus history with them. Okay. So I actually have one with kerosene because we rolled over mm -hmm. previously. And, and Max so is, we'll see how that goes. And Max is giving you uh, uh, two to the roll. All right. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, we're starting at a five. We're up to a six. And then the two puts us at an eight. Okay. So in this case, um, I will say that on an eight, you are not only is uh, kerosene stable, uh, I will say that you also managed to heal one segment. Uh, okay. So she is now, uh, I was going to say, you were at six, right? No, I was at three. Oh. You only took, you. I thought you took two harm there. I did. Oh, so you had three harm total. Yeah, I oh. had cleared. I had like a whole clock full, uh, uh, a segment full, oh, full okay. filled. Blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I gotcha. Yeah, so you are now considered stable and heal one segment. Yeah, so I still have two. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 Got cool. it. Yeah. Uh, I think. Oh man, I think in light of the fact that that worked, I feel like he did it. I feel like he. To, he, w once this was all going on, I feel like he would have taken the mask off and done some healing stuff. Because I think Did it's you? the, I, I think mean, it's a good call. Again, I think it's the right choice. <laughs> like it's the right choice, but Sin McGuire, hates it. But <laughs> yeah, like McGuire absolutely will not do it without confirmation from Kerosene. Yeah, I don't uh, think you could have gotten it while you were trying like to he, do that. He though. would he would make a a I think very aggressive argument to sin for why he sh should in in the face of you know her counter argument but he's not going to do it uh, okay you know but the lower uh, half is off she's got the compress that I, she's i've like, like i've like lifted it up to you know put something in between your teeth so you can bite down while yeah uh, you know while max is taking the shrapnel out of you uh, and I think once the shrapnel is out, you know, I take that out. Uh, yeah. I'm going to, you know, get some water down your throat. When you take the compress away from her mouth, I think she, you can't see her eyes because you still have the, that part of the mask hasn't been removed. But she just sort of like angles her head just a little bit and goes in a voice you've not heard from her. Dad? And I think Max at that point looks over at McGuire and just kind of like arches an eyebrow. He is covered in blood um, at this point, just up to his, like, uh, the middle of his forearms. Yeah. Uh, McGuire kind of glances at Max uh, and then looks down at Kerosene. Hang in there, kid. Hang in there. Um, she like has like one arm up and like I think before you can put like the mask fully back on she goes I'm trying but it's it's been really hard I thought I thought I saw you die ain't nobody dead yet girl not today yeah not today do you put the mask back on yeah, you know, I let the I let the bottom kind of go back down. It slips fully back on, and uh, she just sort of like, as if like a defibrillator had just jump started her a little bit. She like springs up and goes, "I haven't." And uh, yeah, at which point I think Max again just kind of like he just starts wiping his hands on his trousers. And looks to um, you, Maguire, and uh, like then looks at Sin and says to you, Maguire, he says, stay with her. And he then looks at you, Sin, and says, I'm going to show you something. All right, I've had that promise before. Uh, she, um, I would I would imagine, though, as as soon as um, before she heads off there, she she's going to like she goes over to Kiersey and like oh, as if she weren't wearing the mask, just like takes the mask in her hands like, oh, Kiersey, you scared me back there. I did. Yeah. Did I blow him up? Dax and I 
<laughs> we let him yeah. up. You did good. They got blown up. Uh, here, just, um... <laughs> She's gonna look for something on her to, like, give to uh, Kiracy, and I think she finds just, like, a random little... No, you know what? She um she has like this uh kind of braid um necklace wrapped around her wrist and she kind of takes it off and then puts it on oh. um kerosene. You worried me back there. Scaring Jenny. me is fine, but don't you ever worry me again. But if I worry you I get more shiny. Mm. Shiny. <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna go and fall. A lesson me. was learned. Uh -huh. Oh no. It was the lesson you were trying to do. The last is, lesson like, we wanted. Looking at the bandage now, like huh. Ow. Sin, as you, uh, as you, you know, kind of duck out of the car, uh, McGuire catches your your ear for just a just a second, uh, and is gonna say, "Get that blade off him." Oh, yeah. Um, well, Mag, listen, I'm, uh, I didn't mean to snap at you back there. It's just, I mean, you know, it's all right. Anyway, I'll, I'm gonna see what he wants. I don't think we have time to show me anything, but, you know, um, she's going to go over where he is. Uh, as uh, you uh, kind of rejoin and kind of like join him, he is walking down uh, one side of this slope of this uh, canyon. Um, and I think that the thing that uh, before we kind of like rejoin that scene, uh, I am curious, Dax, so what have you been off doing while this is happening? I thought, um, I thought you'd forgotten. I was just going to creepily write in the background. <laughs> um, Daxo has made his way back to, um, the crash site of the most recent one, at least. Um, and is, uh, you know, gonna make sure that dude's dead. Um, and also wants to search the body. Okay. Uh, well, I will say this. Uh, you search the body of the one that is still intact, that has T-boned. Uh, it is pretty crispy at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but there is one thing that you've noticed, which is uh, his bandolier seems to have come undone uh, after sometime before the crash and some distance away from the body, you see a bandolier with two of those fragmentary grenades on them. Oh, yeah. Um, Dax will snag that up. Um, and, uh, you know, just, uh, just I think probably grab. Uh, is the spear still intact or is it, is it, is it donezo? Uh, I will say that, um, won't we, um, read a situation? shot that's a nine no bonuses yeah so i will say that with a seven to nine you do uh i would say the question you would want to ask here is what should i be on the lookout for you do find uh the spear uh but the tip has broken off in him as uh uh the impact has been made and part of the half haft has snapped off uh so it's about the length of your forearm Axel will take it anyways. Uh, I think, uh, well, actually, we'll get the tip. Um, I think the haft is negligible to the, the tip. And uh, if if that's, in, you know, if, if that requires a little bit of minor rooting around in the, in the, in the, the juicy bits, this uh, recently, um, I guess, what is that, parbroiled? Yeah. Uh, mm. Uh, let's let's say black. <laughs> let's say blackened. Lightly, lightly blackened. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Um, Daxo just pulls that Delicious. out and keeps that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, yeah, and is going to um, make his way back. If there's nothing else of interest, no identifying marks, no signs of um, nothing else, then he'll just begin making his way back, creeping through the canyon, making sure to hear. Uh, to listen for any um, other things that might be in the area. Yeah, and uh, in that case, what I would say is, um, honestly, on that seven to nine, that's what you find. Um, okay. The rest of the canyon is kind of quiet as the grave. Um, as we kind of rejoin uh, one mile away, 
Uh, Sin, Max is leading you down uh, the kind of like edge of this kind of like outcropping, uh, this precipice that uh, the uh, ravine has led up to kind of like uphill. Um, and he is leading you down one way uh, off to one side, which seems to be like this kind of like overhanging uh, part of the uh, uh, of the cave. What do you do? She's going to be following. Um, her her hand is a little nearby her her chain, her spiked chain. Just, you know, not super noticeably, but it's just just hovering around a little bit, just you know, just in case. A, a gal's got to be careful. Absolutely. And as uh, he is um, walking. Uh, you realize that he is going, he is dipped out of uh, uh, kind of like the daylight or the kind of like the harsh beating sun and into the darkness of this kind of like honeycomb tunnel uh, that is still kind of like worked into the rock here. Uh, and the, he kind of like the light just disappears from his uh, body and you kind of like lose sight of him for a moment. Um, and then you hear a, <laughs> like the roar of an engine uh as you know very uh you hear the roar uh what is the first thing that you do hand comes away from the chain <laughs> um and we'll we'll approach this uh cavernous hole in the wall mall hole yeah so okay oh. as um as you kind of like approach this uh, uh, this wall, kind of like a uh, uh, cavern uh, uh, tunnel, uh, a pair of lights flick on and kind of like blink at you before uh, going once again full beam. Uh, they would be they are blinding for a moment until they are switched off and out of the uh, tunnel rolls uh, this very. Uh, like very historical kind of automobile. It looks to be like a very smooth muscle car uh, with aerodynamic edges and exposed engine that has been uh, customed and worked a million different ways uh, and armor plated and patched in areas uh, at which point uh, rolling up very slowly uh, as waiting for you to kind of join him uh kind of on the driver's side to kind of like look at him through the window you see max rolling up in what is very clearly uh an antiquated uh pursuit special oh yeah she'll actually it i think the first thing she's going to do is go over to the passenger side and just try and get in yeah absolutely the easy enough the door unlocks pops Swoop. open uh you sit in the passenger seat uh, at which point he looks over at you and says, yeah, these kids, I'll make sure they get back. You're gonna need yeah, well, that's what you can get. They absolutely aren't going to get back. It's going to be your, your ass on the line. You can murder at you. And he, without breaking eye contact with you, uh, takes the blade uh, that um mcguire gave him and turns the handle to you and uh as if to give it back she'll take it yeah well you know i listen i always knew i could trust you she's gonna stick it back it, it's joe straight in the cleavage that's where she was keeping it <laughs> well i knew i could trust you the whole time but uh no wrong moves no wrong moves from you but this is a great is this yours she kind of gestures to the car yeah this is nice. Where'd you get this? Long time ago. Standard issue. Well, listen, I've got a, I've got a lot of things that one might consider standard issue a long time ago, but you know. Uh, so, um, yeah, this is this is great. This is great and um, extra good too because I, I think our tank back there is a little busted. And uh, you know, having everybody on my on my bike would be a little bit of a rough go. Yeah, this makes you plenty of time, plenty of space to, for her to put it in the mend if we need to. We can patch the lancer if we need it. 
but yeah. I drive. The tank or this? This. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> she's going to be kind of like peeking around, looking at everything, and may- maybe pawing at it too, just because it's, she'd be like, yeah, it's a cool car. Uh, so she's pawing at everything. She's like, well, you know, I, I suppose since it is yours, you know, and, and you, you know, I'm, I know how I feel about my girl, indicating the uh, the bike. Yeah, I, I wouldn't, you know, I, that's fine with me. Um, but, you know, eyes on you, eyes on you. And uh, he kind of nods in acquiescence here. And uh, as you kind of like look over across the dash, you see emblazoned uh, on one side, a uh, single uh, two, uh, one initial and a single word that says M uh, period Rokotansky. Hmm. What's a what's a Rokotansky? I've never heard of that model before. He uh, looks back at you, then looks back out, and just drives kind of wordlessly back towards the rest of your friends. Uh, all of you, uh, with the exception of Daxo, unless you have made your way back, uh, are uh, to or to arrive in time. Uh, see uh, this pursuit special rolling up into this kind of de facto circle of wagons you guys have made. I, I think uh, the camera follows the pursuit special as it rolls, um, as it's driving back towards, and you see like um, you just see like this section of rock move as Daxo kind of um, watches you guys go past, as, and you see the cloak, which is just uh, camouflaged really well in the desert. Um, <laughs> and just uh, begins creeping after you guys. Yeah. I think as soon as they get close enough to the group, uh, Sin's going to be literally half outside the window. Hi! Guys, look at this! Look at this! And she's just going to slap the top of the car. Look! Car. Is this neat? New car. (laughs) Uh, How's Kerosene? Right right there. Uh, Kerosene is going to like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kerosene uh you just once again like uh this this machine is just uh excellence performance of an bygone age but it has been patched and custom worked and worked lovingly and carefully uh and preserved as, as to the best of uh, Max's ability you can tell. This is a very well loved machine even in spite of uh the wasteland the state of the wasteland. I think she like slams up against it. Like, like she can't physically hug a car, but like she can get kind of her arms around it. And it's just like her, her, like the cheek of her mask is like pushed up against like, Oh, I like it. I like this car. Can I have it? McGuire says to nobody in particular. All right. She's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, he looks, uh, at you McGuire from the driver's seat. And he says, we patch that Lancer. We can use it if we need to. We can make an escape in this. It's quieter. But after a while, we're going to go on foot. How much gasoline you got in that? Enough. Make it back to Black Rock. All right. That's all I want to hear. And, uh, yeah, I think, uh, if you guys would like to try to field patch the machine, it's going to be once again, kind of like, uh, acting, I think, uh, to heal harm otherwise, uh, or maybe just probably just rolling with cool. Uh, but oh, with, with cool, you say, that. yeah. Did with, you say rolling with cool? Yeah. I was hey, like, all right. Yeah. I was, give it a go. Yeah. And if anybody would like to assist you, you are more than welcome to do that. Absolutely. You have a plus three with me. <laughs> hey, hey. Um, yeah, so Sin, Sin just kind of climbs out through the window because she's already partially through it anyway. Um, and kind of put it as she's walking past, going to put a hand on um, Kerosene's back. Come here, let's try and fix this thing. Yeah. Um, um, I rolled an 11, by the way. So you have <laughs> aid. Yeah, you have uh, you have plus two to uh, your uh, plus cool roll. All right. Um, out of curiosity, and I, just out of curiosity for a rules question that I couldn't figure out, when you help somebody, does that increase history? Uh, yeah, actually, that's another... Oh, does it? Yeah, it does, because let me see. 
Uh, I believe when you do roll plus, uh, or when you get helped by someone, it's uh, there's something and I can't find it. I was I've been looking through the playbook. Mm. Yeah, let me see. Okay, let me double check. When you heal another characters, you get plus one history with them on your sheet for every segment of harm you heal. Uh, if this brings you to history plus four, you reset to history plus one as usual. So Maguire... So that's only because of harm, yeah. Yeah. Maguire, mm-hmm. make sure to add that uh, to uh, your own history with... You healed two, right? Two yeah. segments? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So Dang! I, I have plus two history. Awesome. And we're uh, back at... Sin, we... we're, we're going to roll over for doing healing for a car. Yeah. Yay! So now I'm at plus one with you. Woo! Right. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Let's see how you Yeah, do. so do we both get an, an extra history? Uh, do I, think, I get one too? I think, uh, well, what was that? I think that. Um, or just the helper gets one. I think it's just the helper gets one. So. I'll take it. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, as she walks past Maguire, also, she's going to like pause real quick and um, kind of gesture back to the, the pursuit special. Max is intent on driving that one. I think it's only right. Yeah, uh, figure as much. I'd like that. It's, it's too beautiful to have any of our hands on it. Um, then one, two, three, go. Uh, oh, so so that was a three help. Yeah, is I that was, what I'm to understand? Uh, I was gonna say it's your cool plus two. Uh, My so, cool plus two. Okay. Uh, so plus whatever you rolled, or so. Yeah, let's start with what's your cool. Um, well, so my roll plus cool, mm-hmm. um, we're we're sitting at a twelve. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then um, I just want to know. So is that a is that a plus three from kerosene that was, or a plus that, two? That was plus. No, two I rolled a here. plus. I misunderstood. I rolled a plus three to see if I give you okay enough help. So that's that would be a fourteen. Yeah. Okay. All right. I will say this. Uh, what is it like? What do you guys realize? Uh, uh, what about this makes you realize that the harm is superficial enough that you can uh, pretty much uh, make this uh, a once again serviceable and uh, uh, not prone to break down? Like what patches does uh, does each of you do? Opens the trunk. Oh, here's your problem right here. Pulls out a handful of snakes. Oh my god, we do have a snake in this fight. Oh. <laughs> oh. We have a snake in this fight all along. We have a handful of snakes in the fight. Um uh, Daxa appears immediately behind you and grabs grabs <laughs> the handful of snakes and just kind of walks over and just begins bopping them on a rock. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Kerosene, uh, mm. why don't you take a look at the um, the blown up bits over there? Okay. Uh, she dive bombs like into the engine. Like she's got it open and you just see like, yeet. And like her legs are like flailing as she's like dangling, like just sort of using her core strength to like keep her <laughs> hooked onto the car as she messes around with stuff. A bunch of stuff goes like flying out uh, from the hood of the car. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I I would say that this uh, car has taken. Uh, I'm trying to remember. It took four harm. I'd say I'm gonna mark two harm off. Uh, as you guys, your patch has basically uh, rendered it back to a little bit of deep damage on the chassis, uh, kind of plating. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it still runs fine. You know, it could make it back to Black Rock if you needed to uh, gun it back in a pinch. You just don't know the state of it depending on how hard you drive it okay sounds good all right so unless you guys are stopping for the night to try to kind of rest and recover um you can continue your I mean, journey to the camp unless there's what, something else anybody what wants time to is it uh i was gonna say this has been a day's journey so uh, what time? Of- I like if the sun is setting as we're fixing all this shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, this- it'd um, probably be good. Well, they'd probably. My guess is the late nighters. They stay up all night and sleep all day. I bet if we go early morning, they will be dead out. I will tell you this. This is going to be. I think that this is going to be. Actually, uh, before I call anybody's move, what is what? Are, what are you guys thinking? 
Oh, I was just going to ask, based on my knowledge of how, you know, these biker gangs function, is Sin's assessment correct? I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, yeah, that was what I was looking for. Uh, I would like you to uh, read a sitch for me. Hmm. I'll do that. Uh, 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 we all sure. trust you, Maguire. Good luck. I just well, we believe in you. Uh, mm -hmm, five. Okay. On a misc, ask one anyway, but be prepared for the worst. What's my best escape route? Way in, way past. What enemy is most vulnerable to me? Which enemy is the biggest threat? What should I be on the lookout for? What's my enemy's true position? Who's in control here? I mean, I think what I'm trying to figure out is what's my enemy's true position? Um, you know, temporally. Uh, temporally, I will tell you this. Um, what jives about things uh, with Omega to you is Omega's very unstable. One of the reasons that I think that a lot of people in your old outfit found it unpalatable uh, to uh, deal with him was because of how unstable he was still kind of charismatic and still uh, a relatively cutthroat in this way. Uh, there was probably not as keen of a uh, charisma in your memory, but the thing that you recall is that he started hunting people at hours of the day and started kind of like losing his mind to the wastelands as a boss, uh, as, as time passed. So I think the answer is it's very unpredictable. Could be yeah. on a whim. All right. So, uh, you know, uh, I'll say to Sin, uh, well, that's a good guess for the boys, but uh, the boss, I know this bloke, and uh, he's just as like to be wide awake in the middle of the night as he is at high noon. So we might take his boys unawares, but he's going to be another man, and he's the huh? one we got to get. That at least be some sort of vantage. Yeah. You ain't wrong. Either way, we gotta get close enough to scout it out. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Well, anyway, we got the tank back up, uh, for the most part. Yeah, how's she looking? Uh, well, it, looking... It looks good. You just see, uh, like, kerosene, like, uh, like, pop out of the engine. Uh, yeah, McGuire, yeah, McGuire gives you a thumbs up, like, all right. Uh, turns back to Sin a little lower. How's the girl looking? Uh, well, you know, I mean, she she's seeming like she always is. Yeah, she's, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, real perky like. Yeah. In her own way. Yeah, no, I'd agree with that. Could I, I imagine both of them looking over and Kerosene doing something. Oh, she is talking Something that to... involves flinging, like, <laughs> yeah. flinging, you know, parts that aren't really needed out of the car. And she's, like, replacing them. But uh, yeah. I think at currently, since she popped out of the engine and is done, I think she's having a very animated conversation with Screwy and Kneecap. Yes, I was hoping for this. I mean, I think she's just, you just hear her like muttering because she had the tools out and like, she's like shaking one of them and then looking over at the other one and just nodding along, but like not act, like not saying anything because whatever she's hearing, it's like happening in her brain. And then she's, you just see her like rotating her. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Zach. It's just very much like that. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I feel like she's, she's pretty much back to the normal that we know her. You're so quiet, though. Perhaps even silently speaking to me. <laughs> Sorry, I faced completely away from the microphone. Uh, McGuire says to you, You think it was a mistake? Um, healing her? No, no, I think that's exactly what... Now, bringing we... the kids out here. Listen... If it's not out here, it's in there, it's anywhere. You know that, you know well enough as I that there is no safe place. And you get some life experience, and it's best they do it under our wings. Yeah, that's what I thought before. 
And then when she got hurt, I don't know, Sin. Something different about it. Something different about kid getting hurt. Yeah, believe me, I know. Um, she's she's going to put her uh, hand on his shoulder, arm, on the side. <laughs> um, look, we can't protect him forever, you know? I mean, they, they were practically, well, I don't want to say grown-ups because they're still kids, you know, but, I mean, this day and age, as soon as you strike out on your own, you're grown. <sighs> They gotta learn. They gotta learn, and you you know you know better than anyone. I don't want to see them either get hurt. I'm kind of gonna look over and hit both of them wherever they may be. Uh, you realize Daxo is uncomfortably close to both of you, and currently oh. gutting and uh, gutting and cleaning these snakes that you pulled out of the back of the the car. And uh, it has been staring, like, while the camera has been panning back and forth between the two of you, you just see Daxo's eyes reflecting in the light in, like, from uh, from behind you guys. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's... Uh, she's going to reach over and just, right, like... Kid. And just, like, pat him on the back, uh, Daxo. Yeah. Listen, we can't protect him forever. You know, and, and what's better? If they would have gone out like this on their own? Have nobody else to heal them? That's not what we want. Mm. No. I mean, this best way to have it happen. Besides, if anything happens to them, well, we could just kill everyone. Ain't nothing gonna happen to you. It better not. Right? No, my watch is not. It best not on yours. Keep all of those eyes everywhere. Eyes on a swivel. <laughs> and then she's just going to like tap him on the cheek. Boop, boop. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like we got ourselves a deal. I think Max is just kind of silently kind of taking all of this in. So. It's getting now. We're taking the rest. Well, this is your voice, Meg. What do you think? But, uh, we had a big day. Uh, sun's going down. Ain't no telling what uh, those boys are up to. I say, get a rest while we can. And uh, pick it up early in the morning. Try to get a jump on them, like you said. Yeah. Well, plus, take this time to <laughs> pull the rifle back out. Make sure these all these pieces of crap work and just kind of wanders off. All right. So as you guys get settled down for the night, uh, I think that uh, any of you who are looking just see Max kind of settle into uh, the cabin of, not the cabin, but the front seat of this um, Pursuit Special. Um, there's just this kind of like haunted or kind of like semi nostalgic look that crosses his face, uh, as he kind of takes in the feel of this kind of gauze wrapped, uh, steering wheel and just kind of peers out into the sky above all of you, uh, as the night falls. And my question is, um, do any of you do you guys do anything before you go to bed? I think at some point in the night, I don't know if this is bef this is probably not before bed, but at some point in the night, uh, McGuire, uh, maybe you wake up or roll over and you realize like Kerosene has fallen asleep next to you, and she is holding on to your arm. Uh, yeah. Okay, now's the good now's a good time to do a dumb idea. Um, Maguire, like, you know, kind of, kind of stirs, maybe we're, we're like, uh, are we in the car? Are we like leaned up against the car outside? What do you think? Probably be more comfortable in the car, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're sort of, 
you know, in the car on this this long bench seat. Um, Maguire stirs and sees that that kerosene is sort of like falling asleep against uh, uh, against him, and uh, looks out to the horizon, sees like you know just this the sort of dim like below the horizon pre dawn light. <sighs> yeah, all right, about time, and. He is going to very, very carefully and gently uh, take kerosene, uh, shift her out of the car and onto the ground, uh, hopefully without waking her. Ooh, do I need to roll to see if I wake up? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I think that this is something that he rolls. This is going to be... Yeah. The min- He's going rogue! He's, this is, oh, you bastard! This is... <laughs> I know what you're doing! He's you being a exactly bad daddy! Oh, no! <laughs> this is... Uh, I, I think this is to manipulate or to interfere with someone. No, yeah. this is to manipulate someone. Yeah. Can I okay. interfere with his role? Uh, you may certainly try. David, is that okay with you? Uh, I mean, you know, roll for it and see what happens. <laughs> All right. What are you doing? Roll. I'm going to roll first and see how, how efficacious it is. Yeah, I meant like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, what What are you What are you doing? Because yeah, wh- what you, I'm you, literally you, using the help or interfere roll. with someone. No, actually. No, but right. what is da- Daxo doing? Yeah. What's oh, Daxo what, doing? So Daxo, the whole night, Daxo has been awake. Um, I think like every single shot that we saw of like people, you know, g- kind of uh, getting resting down, you just see Daxo kind of in the background, um, just puttering around. But at some point, um, made a very small fire and has made uh, like these kind of long uh, snake kebabs. Um, and um, and I think uh, what actually happens here is Daxo's literally standing there holding um, like a, uh, a snake kebab in one hand and the, the grenade bandolier in the other watching this happen. And I think uh, I, I rolled a total of um, it's I believe it's uh, dice plus HX, which is two with Maguire. So that's a nine. OK, cool. on a seven to nine, they have a minus one to interfere uh, with the roll. So you have minus one to your roll, uh, Maguire. Okay. So it's like you being super sneaky and Daxo's just kind of standing there with like these things that he'd made. Yeah, can't out sneak for... a sneak. Yeah. All, all right. right. Um, all right, so I am rolling. I think this is... Uh, what am I rolling? So this is the thing is, oh, you know what? This is do something under fire. So roll plus cool. This, this yeah. Is, yeah, it's either that or... Because you're trying some... not to wake me up. Okay. Yeah. And you're doing it under the judgmental eyes of your other kid. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to use my Meister D move, uh, which allows me to, when I do something under fire, roll plus hot instead of plus cool. My hot is two. So with Daxo's interference, I have plus one. All right. <laughs> and let's roll that and see what happens. Oof, a four. She's up. Yeah. <laughs> You 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 feel uh, kerosene wake up in your arms. What? Yeah, and I'm like just about to put her down on the ground. Damn, son of a bitch. Maguire, what 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 are you what are you doing? Go back to sleep, kerosene. What? what but um, why aren't you? I gotta go do something. I'll, I'll help. I'll, I'll help. Yeah. All right. What I need you to do to help is stay here with everyone. That, that's not helping. That's staying. You go keep an eye on him for me. No, no. I go. I'll go with you. I go with McGuire. Now I feel like <laughs> you are rolling. You need to be rolling to manipulate me. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. So see how we do. 
Not my not my best shot, but let's do it anyway. Can I roll to assist <gasps> by con- staring soulfully into my? I will eyes? not need it. I rolled an eleven. It is a ten. Nice. All right. All right. So for uh, four PCs, uh, if they go along with you, they mark experience. If they refuse, erase one of their stat highlights for the remainder of the session. What they do then is up to them. So. Okay. Uh, I, I, f- I feel like what clinches it is just like she holds on to the, the, the open car door and just like, don't, don't leave. Please don't leave me. And McGuire's shoulders just slump. I'm not going to leave you, girl. All right. Not gonna leave you. Let's, uh. Let's get going. Let's get our kit together. We gotta get a jump on those boys, right? Yeah, yeah. I get to blow them up now, right? Yeah. This time, uh. You get to blow them up, girl. She dives into the shotgun side of the seat. Jaxo <laughs> shoves a snake kebab into McGuire's hands with a uncomfortably knowing look. Yeah, I, I, and I think when uh, McGuire nice started kid. speaking more loudly... <laughs> um, <laughs> nice <yeah>. try. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, McGuire started speaking loudly about, oh, let's get going, uh, he pro- yeah, I'll probably hear from on top of the car in the <laughs> Lancer seat. <laughs> <laughs> what... Well, uh, Oh, we're going now? Is it? Was it morning already? What's what's happening? Yeah, we're going now. We're going ah. now. We're, oh, everybody, good, get up! Good. All right, uh, yeah. and you know, so McGuire starts like Bob. starts like oh, banging on the you. dash. I love these. I love Boy, them. stranger, rouse yourself. <sighs> no. Max wakes up. Somehow, Daxo is right the fuck there already. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> kebab. I made you breakfast. There you go. Thanks, kid. Hey, good. Just grabs a snake kebab. <laughs> just not even thinking about it. Just like starts cramming the snake in there. Unholy sounds coming from the front of the vehicle as like kerosene has the mask just raised up a little bit as she's like gnawing on the kebab. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, I think Max just. All right, here we go. So. Yeah, and just like as everybody starts to make their preparations, you just see McGuire like sitting in the driver's seat of the Lancer, looking grumpy as fuck. He is so mad that he was not able to successfully sneak away. Kirstine shoots you a look that probably goes unseen because of the mask, but she knows what you tried to do. Yeah, and, and uh, <clears throat> I, I do think if he's if he's being super grumpy, uh, all of a sudden, leaning on the window, what's wrong with you? What bit your butt this morning? <laughs> Nothing. All oh, you were too good for me. Yeah, you're just grumpy. Here, take one of these. She's gonna hand him another snake kebab. Huh? I've already had three. How many of these bloody things are there? There were a bunch in the car. I don't know. I like putting them in the car when I'm working. They make a nice sound. Oh, damn. And then yeah, you just hear the snakes cr- on a tank. You just hear the crunch of the scale, like the 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 blackened scales under Max's teeth before and a hard swallow before you just hear. We should go now. And as you guys ride out. It's only a little short distance away, but you come to the edge of the precipice uh, about less than uh, another two miles uh, around, uh, kind of snaking around to the uh, snaking east, uh, where before the ca- uh, canyon had been on the west side of that cracked plain. Uh, and so as you come around, You have a very clear view of about 1,000 so, maybe maybe about mm, 500 to 
600 feet away, uh, a sub less than a thousand feet away, is a small encampment uh, that is dotted and uh, uh, kind of littered with a number of motor vehicles. Uh, some of them are muscle cycles, like the one that uh, Sin has rode it in on. Uh, one or two of them are also larger kind of uh, large framed chassis uh, trucks of some sort uh, that have all terrain uh, 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 tires of some sort, one of which resembles your Lancer only in uh, some regards, rather than um, having a means by which uh, somebody could like hang on instead, there is a mounted turret with what looks to be a very large uh, bladed implement at the end of uh, the barrel. What you clearly recognize is a harpoon. Inside of this encampment, you clock several people kind of uh, uh, taking guard here. Uh, and at this point, um, there seems to be kind of like a spare number, some kind of enclosed kind of dwellings that you can't really kind of make out the interiors of. There's a little bit of a glow there. There's several. Um, the thing you do all see is uh, a enclosure at the center of the camp uh, that is constructed out of barbed wire. And you see a number of very frightened uh, people in uh, half states of rest or uh, exhaustion uh, and hyper awareness as all of them seem to be uh, basically kind of corralled inside. And that is where we're going to end tonight's session and pick up with the final episode of Mad Max the Black Highway. So guys, if you made it this far, thanks so much for uh, tuning in uh, to this, our very uh, 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 frenetic, rabid, uh, one might say, uh, 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 flight of fandom for uh, this Apocalypse World actual play. Uh, we're going to go around the table now and do our uh, shout outs and plugs. So uh, starting once again with David. All right. Uh, well, once again, I've been David. Uh, he, him. Uh, you can check out the games that I design over at dbb-8.itch.io, including some stuff that we have played right here on Flights of Fandom. Um, I'm also on Instagram and Twitter, at D. Brunel Brutman. And uh, I have uh, an exciting uh, little announcement about a uh, an upcoming mini flight, a micro flight. I don't know. Um, we are partnering with uh, the TTT TT RPG for Trans Rights in Texas bundle on uh, Itch, uh, which features four hundred and ninety three games uh which you can snap up for as little as five dollars an absolutely wild proposition all the proceeds for that are going to the uh transgender education network of texas and uh the uh organization latina de trans and texas um who both of whom uh, support uh, gender diverse equality in Texas um, through education, uh, community efforts, um, and uh, obviously uh, could use some funding right now in response to some terrible public policies in that state. So uh, to that end, in order to promote this bundle, um, we're partnering with them to two weeks from now, the last Tuesday in March, uh, we are going to run one of the games from the bundle uh, for you lovely people. Hopefully uh, get some folks over to the bundle, chip in some money, get some amazing games, and all that money goes to some truly worthwhile causes. So you're going to want to join us for that. Uh, join us again next week and we'll tell you what we're playing. Ho ho, I'm teasing it. Uh, it's going to be good though. We have an awesome cast lined up. 
and we're super pumped for it. If uh, you want to pop over and get the bundle in advance, just search uh, TTRPGs for trans rights in Texas on itch. It'll pop up and uh, you can throw some dollars to something that really matters. So uh, do that if you would like. Definitely join us in uh, in two weeks for what we have planned. And that's it for me. Awesome. Uh, Hopper, if you would like to go. Ooh, still me, still Hopper. Um, sorry about that. Uh, I think I'm doing that with David. My brain's lightly uh, emulsified. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'm... Uh, I'm <laughs> um, if you're not sick of me in that context, you should also check out our show, which, uh, and I guess also not sick of Marcy and Zach, but they're awesome. Um, uh, you should check out uh, our show here on this network, uh, Hole in the World, uh, uh, an Invisible Sun actual play. It's wild, it's surreal, it's bonkers, it's dramatic. Uh, and that is every other Sunday at 4.30 p.m. Yeah. ST. Um, also, you should check out Jeff Stormer's podcast, Party of One. Uh, <laughs> it's really rad. Uh, awesome. Marcy, if you would like to have some shout outs or plugs. What is up? Uh, I'm still Marcy, aka Experimental Madness. Again, that's the name you can find me in most places around the internet, except for Twitter, where I remain the resident cryptid, uh, as I want to say. Uh, yeah, everything David said, we're very excited about. Um, I'm here with more of the the much blander, but no less I well, maybe bland isn't the right word, but also my brain might be melting through my ears as well at this point. Um, you know, we've our typical come schedule. Feral and we've all lost it. Listen, it takes a lot of work to be that unhinged. Uh, I uh, I'm here with schedules for flights of fandom. Uh, obviously, we're going to be doing our finale of this flight next Tuesday. You don't want to miss it. Uh, and then we're doing a hard left turn into uh, Bridgerton in <laughs> April with a Good Society flight. Couldn't be any more radically different, and I'm very excited to see that mood switch. Uh, then we're going to be back in May for a big concluding season of our so far two-parter, now moving into its third and final flight of our Star Wars show. So that'll be fun. And uh, what else am I missing? Oh, right. I am going to be DMing for the first time in June in a Bioshock flight. It's happening. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, and I'm only mildly freaking out about it. Um, you know, there's a ton of shows on Manapod Studios. If you're not able to catch them when they're live, check out our YouTube channel. Uh, if you ever want to know more about our schedule, we've got our calendar. You can know more if you join our Discord. And if you ever want to play with us, you should let us know. Awesome. And finally, Fox. Yes. So as many others, I am still, well, as many other people, I am still the same person I was. And that person is Rocket Fox. You can find me if you pretty much look up that name anywhere. And uh, yeah, I tonight want to give shout outs to snakes. Ah, <laughs> ah, <laughs> it's, happening. <laughs> it's happening right it's now. It's a danger noodle. No. It's a baby. Oh. Shout out to B. Oh. Uh, I would never baby. eat you. Star of the show oh. now. No, never. <laughs> if only we'd known. <laughs> it's for the art. Those, those other snakes, they were much less cool. It's true. It's true. So they were maraca snakes. Yeah, yeah that's why I put them in there. <laughs> yeah. But I'm dumb. Uh, so so yeah, lose my shout out. Shout out to all Aww. danger noodles. I love that. All danger noodles. Um, <laughs> finally, for my own part, I uh, just want to recognize our good buddy Dratsim who just came in, uh, who uh, has kindly subscribed once again. So thank you so much. Uh, and not only that, um, also you should check out uh, his uh, very cool stream, which is called uh, appropriately. I have no mouth and I must stream, which is a brilliant title. Everybody should check this out, especially because I think you're playing Elden Ring right now as t along with a ton of really cool uh, uh, horror related stuff, which I'm always a fan of. Uh, so guys, uh, thanks so much for joining us for the time being for uh, uh, stay tuned for next week uh, as we go uh, straight into our series finale uh, for Mad Max Black Highway. Uh, and in the meantime, Come game with us. Good night. <laughs>